we can begin. Yeah. Okay. Now, what you see here is, at least in summer or in the fall, one of the nicest views of Ljubljana. It looks like Paris, green leaves, etc. On both sides, nice old houses, nothing special. Eh, but you are wrong. This river here is the official geographical limit between Balkon and Middle Europa. So, beware, on the other side, horror, oriental despotism, women get beaten, get raped and like it. On this side, Europe, civilization, women get beaten and raped but don't like it. So, Balkon, Middle Europa, don't forget it. Our standard joke is what? Uh, and we are really like that, you know, a fairy, fairy, you know, the stupid magic entity who feels your wishes, comes to a Slovene farmer and asks him, I will do whatever you want to you, just remember, I will do to your neighbor twice as much, no? You know what is Slovene farmer's answer? Take one of my eyes. <laughs> because then, and this is the basic Slovene principle. If I get a little bit, but the neighbor gets more, no, it's better if I lose a little bit just that the neighbor <laughs> loses more. Uh, so, uh, okay, these are we Slovenes, no? Then the Montenegro friend, I remember, immediately jumped in and said, you know, Montenegro, they have earthquakes and they are, their cliché is lazy, no? In, you can imagine what was his story. You know, how does a Montenegro guy masturbate, no? He digs a hole in the earth, puts the penis in and waits for the earthquake, no? <laughs> He's too late. But you see how it works even now. I claim this, now we are enacting the true brotherhood and unity. Now comes the dirty conclusion, I warn you, it's really dirty. In the good old days of really existing socialism, a joke was popular among dissidents. A joke used to illustrate the futility of their protests. In the 15th century Russia, occupied by Mongols, that's the joke, a farmer and his wife walk along a dusty country road. A Mongol warrior on a horse stops at their side and tells the farmer that he will now rape his wife. He then adds, but since there is a lot of dust on the ground, you should hold my testicles while I'm raping your wife so that they will not get dusty, dirty. After the Mongol finishes his job and rides away, the farmer starts to laugh and jump with joy. The surprised wife asks him, how can you be jumping with joy when I was just brutally raped? The farmer answers, but I got him, his balls are full of dust. <laughs> this sad joke tells of the predicament of dissidents. They thought they were dealing serious blows to the party nomenclatura, but all they were doing were, well, getting a little bit of dust on the nomenclatura's testicles. <laughs> Is today's critical left all too often not in a similar position? We think we are doing something terribly subversive. We are just... Our task is to discover how to make a step further. Our thesis 11 today should be critical leftists have hitherto only dirtied with dust the balls of those in power. The point is to cut them off. We can... Don't be too pessimistic here, you know. I claim it will be done in a proper, peaceful, ideological struggle. They will not even be aware of it, they will still shout at us, but all of a sudden their voices will get higher. How <laughs> flat was it? No. Thank you very much. Since there were no dirty jokes, I would nonetheless like to begin with a, or to end with a very dirty joke that I heard, believe it or not, in Ramallah from a Palestinian Christian. They are wonderful people, sense of humor. He told me this joke about Jesus Christ. The night before Jesus was arrested, arrested and crucified, he was there praying alone in the tent. Jesus Christ, his followers, apostles gathered around the tent and started to worry. Like, Christ was still a virgin. He didn't have sex. And they say, my God, our Lord did so much to us, so many great things, and he will die tomorrow being crucified without any joy and happiness. So why don't we make at least the last evening of Jesus Christ, why don't we bring some joy to him? So they call Mary Magdalene and ask her to go to the tent where Christ is resting and to seduce him. Of course, being who she was, Mary said, oh, with pleasure, and went there. Now, after five minutes, Mary Magdalene came out 
running with a totally horrified cry. And apostles were wondering, what happened there, my God? Is Christ secretly a pervert? That we did, did he torture her or what? No, no, she explains. I slowly, everything went well at the beginning. I slowly undressed, I spread my legs, I showed to Christ my pussy, but then catastrophe started. He said, what a terrible wound is there. He put his hand off in and healed it, made it go, you know? The best respectful religious joke that I heard, maybe you know it from some of my earlier books, was among the Christians of Palestine. Very tender jokes that I like about Jesus Christ, like just one not obscene one. I love it. I heard this from a Christian Palestinian. I like this total historical inaccuracy. Uh, Jesus Christ gets tired of his preaching, his preaching, and he takes one of the apostles. Let's take, go to Galilee Sea and close to it. Let's play golf. Okay, Christ is playing golf there. He makes a hit, misses it, the ball falls into uh, the sea, lake, water. Okay, Christ being Christ, he of course walks there on the water, reaches, uh, comes back. And then the apostle says, but listen, Jesus, this is a very difficult hit. You will probably fail. Even, who is your big player, the black guy? Uh, Tiger Woods. Even Tiger Woods wouldn't maybe be able to do it. And Jesus said, <laughs> fuck Tiger, I'm God, mm -hmm. I can do it. Mm -hmm. So he <laughs> hits it again, it goes again into the water. So he walks on the water again, and that, I like this total historical confusion. At that point, a group of American tourists come there with a bus and are surprised, like, what is that guy doing walking on water, no? And they mm -hmm. approach the apostle and says, but who's that jerk guy? What does he think that he is? Jesus Christ. You know what uh, Apostle answers? No, it's much worse. He thinks he's Tiger Woods. And now I come to the climactic point. The best experience of this at its clinical purest. I report about it in one of my early books, so I'm sure you don't know it, which is not translated. It was uh, with an Albanian friend of mine, soldier in Yugoslav army. Namely, we were almost friends, becoming friend, but then something was missing. We were still this official cold friend, <laughs> respect, no? And then the guy made the first move. Okay, I don't know if this is a racist cliche, no? I love basic, but I was told that with you, you can joke about everything, but not about your mother and sister. That it's not good to tell you I will fuck your mother or what, no? Uh, uh, okay, so he, uh, he approached me one morning, and I was very shocked because he was an intellectual, and he told me, uh, I fuck your mother, and I noticed what was the message. The message was, let's become truly friends, and I accepted the logic, it, be, believe me, I never had problems with replying dirty to dirty, you know how, what was my immediate answer? Go ahead after I finish with your sister. No? no? Okay, so you know what then happened? Now comes the ethical miracle. Uh, then we embraced, we became friends, and it's not what you think now. Then we were spending hours telling dirty stories or what. No, we were both intellectuals. He was more than me. We were very cold. Just to remind ourselves that we are really friends, a wonderful small ritual developed. Every morning that we met, Instead of saying hello, good morning, we just, we didn't even say the whole story. He told me mother, I told him sister. You know, it was just a reminder we are still friends. So don't, you know, I was always fascinated about this ambiguity of obscenity. On the other, uh, yes, to go so that you will see that I'm nonetheless a good feminist boy, no? I'm not saying these jokes solve everything because, I mean, my God the first feminist reaction, and this should be a test for you. If you pretend to be a feminist, ask yourself, did you immediately feel what is wrong with this joke? That it's, nonetheless, it's the typical male pact about the exchange of women, no? No. I, I, yeah, it's not. Okay, but then I would like to have the opposite 
here I am a feminist. I would like to see two women say, fuck your father after I finish with your husband. You know, that would be feminism for me. A Muslim friend from Ramallah told me one of their jokes, which is, you know, this stupid idea everyone knows, serious, I mean, historical linguists. You know that idea, if you die as a martyr, you go to heaven, 70 virgins await for you. Everybody knows, every serious historical linguist, it's a mistranslation. Uh, it's the same, that word, at that time, seventh century or whatever, uh, Muhammad, uh, was a term in everyday language, it meant from white grapes, the top quality, how do you call it, sour grapes, raisins, raisins. And this was the standard sign of Arab hospitality. You know, you are a welcome guest, we give you a whole palm of 70 white raisins. So, that's Ramallah, West Bank job. There is an ugly Palestinian boy, he wants to sleep with girls, he is too ugly, gets no girl, so he said, my God, I like sex so much that I will become a martyr, explode myself. He does it and, okay, enters heaven, and then, ah, oh, here you have them raisins. <laughs> and he said, sorry, mistranslation, can I return back, and so on, and so on. There is a nice French joke against a stupid Englishman, directed a stupid Englishman who goes to a French restaurant and wants to impress them with his knowledge of French, but gets all the expressions wrong, and it's a wonderful whole line, like, the waiter asks him hors d'oeuvre, like hors d'oeuvre, like, you know, appetizer, and he reads it literally, out of work, and answer, no, no, I'm not hors d'oeuvre, I have my job, I can pay for it, and so on, and so on, <laughs> and at the end, to impress them, saying good night, he wants to appear educated Latin, he says, nota bene, you know, like, good night, so... Okay, no. let me tell you a better one than in yeah. that mode. This uh, man arrives at the University of at the, sorry, at the airport of Athens, I'm not fully awake yet. Mm -hmm. Arrives at the airport of Athens, goes to the immigration officer, immigration officer says, nationality, German, occupation, no, no, I'm here for holidays. <laughs> <laughs> But you Greeks have a limit of humor. I was once sitting beneath Acropolis in a restaurant and they tried to convince me that there is a crisis in Greece. And I looked up and said, my God, you know Acropolis, my God, if you don't even have the money to renovate that building, it must no, really be a big crisis in Greece, you know. And they didn't find it funny, I don't know what...